Ladies and gentlemen, it's RedGamingTech.com video. We're going to be taking a look at the PlayStation 4's development kits. Over a series of time, there has been three distinct versions of these developers kits. And I figure it would be quite fun for us to take a look at them and how they've evolved and just how Sony have basically refined the process of creating the PlayStation 4 and how developers have been moving on with the hardware. So I'm sure you guys know the specifications of the PS4 by now. Of course, the 8-core Jaguar, 8 gigabytes of DDR5, and of course the GCN cores to power it, 18 of them. And as I've talked about in several videos previous to this, we know that the design of the PlayStation 4 took a while, and for them to actually come up with the end hardware, or even the beginning specifications, they asked a series of questions. I think this is a very good illustration on this uh, video of actually how they started to create the various parts towards the console and just how these systems are actually designed, especially one that is so close to the Windows architecture, or should I say the PC architecture, the x86. So anyway, there has been three distinct versions of the Orbis, or formerly Orbis, uh, in terms of development kits. One would be the R10 boards. These would be running as basically a special BIOS, however they basically are generic PCs at the end of the day. Then there is initial one. These are early development kits. And then finally there would be the SOC based dev kit, which is very early version of the PS4 hardware. Um, unfinished and unfinalized basically. So let's take a look at the specifications of the first one. Now these very early development kits are pretty much there just to give the developers an idea of what they're going to be working with on the full system. And they basically for the most part will be using off the shelf parts. I'm going to read you a quick run over of what they're going to be using. Ironically enough for Windows 7 they recommend the 64-bit edition as a minimum. And a Sandy Bridge Intel or the Bulldozer AMD CPU. You're also looking at at least 8GB of RAM and a 650W PSU. You've also got a few other bits and pieces. VS10, sorry, VS2010 SP1, that is the Visual Studio 2010 Service Pack 1 from, of course, Microsoft. They have disabled the desktop Windows Manager and applications will still use the Windows services except for the GPU graphics card interface and Sony will provide a GNM, that's a custom GPU interface in other words to um, basically replace the application of the, serv of the Windows one. The next would be Initial 1. Now, the full name of this is DVKT for Development Kit. K5000K. So I'll just read that out again. DVKT-K5000K. There are a number of big changes here. The first is that it's actually removed the Windows operating system. Instead, we have a very primitive version of the Orbis OS. Also gone is the Intel CPU, and now we have a bulldozer only, and we have 8-core bulldozer running at around 1.6 gigahertz. We also have a graphics card, of course, which would be an R10, and that would be a special BIOS version. There will be 8 gigs of RAM, as you'd expect. A blue ray uh, drive as well has been now been added and there's a hot HDD that would be a 2.5 inch which would be 160 gigabytes bear in mind the hard drive space is not indicative of what the final PS4's hard drive space is there is a network controller and they've also added a custom south bridge now the south bridge is pretty much there to access the controller prototypes for the PS4 um, Obviously, at this point, they've not been finalized yet, but it was just to access the prototype variants. Now, the GPU would be the graphics core next. So, in other words, you know, you've got the basic building blocks in here. And it does have a certain amount of video memory as well, um, as well as, of course, USB 3, as well as GBE, which would be for development purposes as well. 
So that's the pretty much the basic building blocks of the PS4. You can see there's a substantial difference between this version and the previous one. They're starting to actually implement the custom stuff. However, it's not as much as the next version. The next version is SOC, or the system on chip base. Now this is a lot closer to what we're actually going to be seeing for the final PS4 hardware. Gone is the bulldozer, and now we actually are using the Jaguar. So we're seeing an 8-core Jaguar in there, of course. Along with the GPU that we expect. We're also seeing a, uniform, a unified, I'm sorry, 8 gigabytes of RAM. As well as the various subsystems that you'd expect, including the networking controller, the Blu-ray drive, Bluetooth as well, the hard disk, WLAN and, and HDMI which does actually do uh, 1080p at 3D, by the way. You've also got analog outputs, which include audio and composite video, should the need arise. And you've also got connection to host. That's actually USB 3. For reference, USB 3 is targeting around 200 megabytes slash a second. This also features the Orbis Dual Shock, as well as the Dual Camera Array. There's definitely a fairly fascinating journey onto development of the PS4 from very simple and very, to be honest with you, very generic parts. You know, you can basically go into a hardware store and get most of them, other than, of course, the custom-built um, BIOSes that Sony, of course, were providing, or the drivers in some cases, into a much, much tightly knit, more tightly knit uh, interface, of course. And you can see really just how certain rumors can start springing up because obviously in some cases they are just using the software just to kind of get the engines to a very basic degree and say, hey, this works on this. And this is one of the reasons that sometimes false rumors can pop up as well. So, but definitely speaking, the PlayStation 4 has gone under a number of evolutions. However, if you actually look at the specifications very closely, to be honest with you, the very basics were there all along. They just simply refined it. So in other words, they knew the performance levels that they wanted to hit, and then they simply nailed it down. If anything, they, they actually reduced some of the specifications. For example, I'm sorry, I just caught the mic there. For example, if you were to look at, say, the Sandy Bridge all the way down to the integration of the APU, the stock to base development kits, you'll notice that they basically refine the specifications down as they also improve the OS and various other functionalities along with it. To say that the PS4 is going to be an impressive piece of kit is a bit of an understatement, however, and as usual, I'm going to be very much covering all of the stuff on the channel, but this has been a fairly short video, at least for me, as you guys know. I tend to make them fairly lengthy, but I just wanted to throw this out there just to give you an illustration of how the various consoles, or in this, how, in this case at least, the PlayStation 4 has evolved over a certain period of time. Anyway, hopefully, hopefully you've enjoyed it, and I'm going to get going. Take care, and bye for now.